Hi, I'm Aaron Reedy. I'm a biologist. I'm a postdoctoral fellow with the National Science Foundation. I work at both Auburn University and the University of Virginia. But before I was a scientist, I was a high school teacher in Chicago. So I'm very excited to be talking to high school science students once again. Um, your teacher has asked me to go over some of the data and the figures that were used in this paper, which is titled, Female Anoles Retain Responsiveness to Testosterone Despite the Evolution of Androgen-Mediated Sexual Dimorphism. This was a paper that I was a co-author on in uh, 2015. So let me give you a bit of background first. In general, uh, our lab works to answer questions of how and why males and females of the same species have evolved such dramatic differences while sharing the same gene pool. Uh, I think that we can all agree that males and females are very different from each other. Um, but when we look at a genetic level, males and females of the same species are nearly identical to each other with the exception of um, a single sex chromosome. And remember that only males have a Y chromosome. Males also have one X chromosome. Just females uh, have, have two X chromosomes. And again, this is only for species um, that have chromosome dependent sex determination like humans and the, the lizards that I study. Um, so this leads to us to the, to the specific question of how do you get such dramatic physical differences between males and females out of a genome that is essentially the same for males and females? Um, well, one of the ways we know that generally you can get the same genome to make two different phenotypes, and that is to make the male form and the female form, um, is by turning certain genes on and off in an individual. That is, certain genes are turned on in males and often females, and vice versa. And this is called changing gene expression. Um, so you can think of this as a series of, of on-off switches, or even more realistically, you can think about it as turning the, the volume up or down on, on certain genes and having them more or less expressed. Um, so we wanted to investigate this process of how males and females of the, of the same species are different. So we took a hormone that we know acts like a switch for gene expression and that it turns on a lot of genes that produce or promote adult male characteristics. And this um, is testosterone. So we are testing the effects of testosterone and particularly thinking of it as a switch that has the potential to turn on male-like traits. Um, we wanted to give testosterone to both males and females and measure how it changed their phenotypes. Now, in, in males, we strongly suspected that it would increase male-like traits. This is what testosterone does, and we know that. But the more interesting question was, would testosterone still turn on these genes and produce more male-like traits in females? Now, if we gave testosterone to both males and females, and we saw that testosterone did produce these traits in females, it would show that females do have the ability to respond to testosterone. and would suggest that evolution has simply reduced testosterone in females without a change in the female ability to respond to testosterone. However, if females showed no response to testosterone, it would suggest that females have evolved lower um, T levels as well um, have, and also that they have lost the ability um, to respond to, to this hormone. And so this is what we were trying to, to figure out, which of these scenarios um, is what in fact has, has evolved. Um, so to do this, we gave male and female brown and null lizards testosterone implants um, at the age of about six months. And this is the age when males and females are starting to, to look very different um, from, from one another. Um, and lots of, we measured lots of different traits of the animals. We measured their body size, um, the length of different bones, and we particularly were interested in um, the dewlap. And let me, let me show you, let me introduce you to the star of our show, the, the brown and noel lizard. Let me, yes, so this slide here, you can see this is a picture of a, of a male brown and noel lizard, and this uh, big orange, bright orange flap of skin is the dewlap. 
And the dewlap is used as a signal. It's to signal to rival males or to court females. But this is the dewlap. And I'm going to show you here, this is a picture of a female brown anole. She also has a dewlap, but her dewlap is about one-tenth the size of, of a male. Um, in this paper, we measured the size of the dewlap. We measured the color saturation of the, of the dewlap, um, as well as the brightness of the dewlap for both male and, and female anoles following these testosterone implants. So let's get into the data of this paper. Um, so first, figure one. And there were some specific things your teacher wanted me to cover, so I'll, I'll try and cover those, as well as just um, give you the general results of, of this figure. So figure this figure, uh, with all four panels, is pretty much showing a similar result, and that is that up to about six months of age, males and females are very similar to each other. After six months of age, females and, and males become very different for each other in terms of body size, in the size of their dewlaps, the brightness of the dewlap, and the color saturation of the dewlap. Everywhere you see the double asterisk symbol, this indicates that this is a statistically significant difference between males and females um, at that particular time point. You'll see the time points are indicated on the x-axis. It's three three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and 20 months. Um, and in particular, the, the double asterisks in this figure denote p-values of less than 0.001. So that is an extremely low, low p-value there. Um, you can see the error bars that surround some of the data points, and these are highlighting how confident we are on the location of the mean. Because each of these data points are the mean values for many test subjects, many lizards, that is. Um, and in this figure, there are several points which look like they don't have any error bars. And this is because for those points, the error bars are so small that they're actually smaller than the, than the data points. And this means that we have uh, a high confidence in those means. So this is figure one for the paper. Let's move on to figure two. Figure two, this figure shows two main things. It shows that one, Males and females are different in certain aspects of their physiology, and you can see that by females are on the left, males are on the right. Um, but then that adding testosterone changes this physiology in similar ways for both sexes and often makes males and females more similar to each other. And so this you can compare the, the, the white and the blank, this is the controls, and then the black is after they've received the testosterone implants. Um, again, the height of the bars is showing the mean average values and the error bars are showing the standard error or the range where we are very confident that the true true mean is. Um, and then I'm going to move to table number one. So this is a big table which is showing tests uh, of sex effects as well as treatment effects. That's the effect of testosterone. And the sex by treatment interaction which is that column is showing the result of, or answering the question of, does the treatment affect the sexes differently? And then also there's a column to show that the initial trait size had an effect on the final trait size. Um, in this, there's two columns, the F column and the P column. The F column shows the value of the test statistic for that particular hypothesis. Uh, and the P value shows you the probability of getting that particular F value if in fact there is no significant difference in the test you're conducting. Again, a low p-value or a high f statistic uh, show you a significant result. And in this table, those are highlighted in bold. Um, overall, this table is, is showing us that males and females have skeletal differences and we see lots of significant sex effects. Uh, testosterone affects those skeletal traits. And we see four traits where there's a significant treatment effect. But in only one trait, and that's pelvic width, uh, I think that's pelvic width, let me look at that, yes, that is uh, pelvic width, does only in that trait does testosterone affect males and females differently. For all the other traits, testosterone has the, the same effect. So I'm gonna move on to figure three. Um, in this figure, the main result shown is that the dewlap in males and females responds similarly to testosterone, that is a similar effect in, in both sexes. And I think it's particularly interesting to note that if you give a female testosterone, I'm looking over here at panel A, her dewlap grows, and so this is a control female given T implant, her dewlap grows to right here, 
just the same level as a controlled male. So if you give a female testosterone, it, it abolishes the, the sex differences in, in the dewlap. And you can see that males that were given supplemental testosterone with the implant, they grew even, even larger dewlaps. So now I'm going to talk about figure four, and this is the final result of the, of the paper. And this is really a summary of all of the, the results in our study. And in this figure, the main result shown is that dewlaps in males and females um, respond similarly to testosterone. And I think it's, um, when, when you look at here, we, we've got traits divided up into a couple different categories. So the, the upper nine panels up here, this is showing where males and females respond similarly, similarly to testosterone. And you can see this is in growth. SVL is snout vent length, so this is how long the lizards are. In both of them, this is, this is blank over here, and you, you see the x-axis is only labeled here at the bottom, and this label applies to all of these moving up. So you can see for control animals, males in black um, grow faster than females in white. But if you give them testosterone, they both increase, they both increase their growth up here, and this is with T, this is with, with testosterone. And you can see a similar pattern across all of these traits in this box. Over here for female bias traits, this is traits where females are larger than males in liver mass and dewlap brightness and dewlap saturation. Um, males and females respond the same way, and that is we see a decrease in value with response to T. But again, all of these top nine panels, males and females respond similarly. Down here in these bottom three panels, um, this is highlighting areas where the change in males and females is in the same direction with the administration of, of testosterone. But for these traits, um, growth in mass, pelvic width, or fat body mass, the, the females actually respond more strongly. That is, the slope of this line is steeper connecting the two white dots. That's the female data points. So they actually had a bigger response to testosterone than, than males did. So as a general conclusion, we see that for this paper overall, our data show that males and females are both highly capable of responding to testosterone. And this suggests to us that many of the differences that we see between males and females are not due to genetic differences between the sexes per se, but rather differences in phenotype that can be induced by a sex hormone in testosterone. And furthermore, it suggests that, that evolution has really played with the testosterone level in males and females to promote differences, but has largely left the ability to respond to testosterone. It's left that alone, as we see that females can respond to testosterone as well. Um, if you guys have any questions, I would be happy to follow up uh, via email and your teacher can share my contact information with you. Uh, again, I'm uh, Aaron Reedy, I'm a, a biologist and um, uh, the president of a company called Data Classroom, and I'm very happy to talk about my data with you. Thanks, guys.